In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. A couple on vacation in Mexico captured and recorded what they thought was a Mexican Bigfoot peeking out of a cave. But as you look at this film and the footage, it doesn't look like a Bigfoot. My guess leans towards a giant. They accidentally captured a massive giant peeking out of a cave on a mountain. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. I don't know if it's just perspective or if that really was a giant because it's such a far distance it does look like a pretty big humanoid but it could also just be someone homeless or just someone looking for shelter and we think it's a giant because it's hard to tell at moments like this even though it would be kind of invading someone's privacy i would like to fly a drone out to this little cave entrance because that was definitely somebody i don't know if it was a bigfoot i don't know if it was a giant or if it was just a normal person have y'all seen this by the way you in the middle what's your name my name is marico what's your real name joselito <laughs> did you guys catch that Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me slow it down for you. Hold on. Do you guys see the eyes? Look at that. The whole facial expression just changed. Look at this, y'all. Look at the slits. The reptilian slits. Have y'all ever seen that video? Look at that. And then the voice change and everything showing y'all. Look, look. There's like slits underneath the eyes. And like you can see like the shift in the face, like the the evil intent. You look at that, like look at that, y'all. Right? I also caught this. Look, his pupils were there and his pupils disappear, right? And then they come back again. Look at that. Y'all see that? Pupils are there. Blinks. They're gone. Look, they're gone. And then they reappear. What? Yeah, you see them on television. They are most likely reptilian, especially the ones that are focused on the most. You know, the stars of the show. You know, there's a reason why they are the stars of the show. And this video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Now the veil is lifting. Now they are showing. Well, they are being exposed every single day. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. You already know what to do, y'all. Let's get this shift. Peace in. I've seen that video floating around a few times, but I never noticed the eye slits happening when they announce themselves. It makes me wonder, are they just communicating with each other in secret, kind of like their own little code, and this individual now knows that that's a lizard person, and they're kind of like in on the joke now? Or it could just be really bad video quality and just a bunch of artifacts in the video feed. Let me know what you guys think about this. Yo, it's been a while, but listen to this shit. My parents just got home, right? And... All of a sudden, I hear my mom, like, hysterically crying. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm, like, hearing her say, all I do is get yelled at, and she's crying. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I go sprinting downstairs to, like, the, where the garage door is. And my dad walks in, and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, well, what are you talking about? And then I go walking outside... And my mom walks into the garage with a fucking big ass smile on her face. And I'm like, are you just crying? She's like, no, what are you talking about? So I'm like, mom, I just fucking heard you like hysterically crying. Mom, are you crying? No. I'm, um, I, 
I literally heard you fucking crying downstairs. No. It doesn't make sense. The mimic is back at it again. Hey, either he's got a ghost or he's starting to go through the stages of schizophrenia. You might want to get that checked out. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And everyone that's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And to the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless, thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, Leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find it in YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Dubai has gone completely back to normal. Literally 24 hours ago, the entire city was underwater to the point where every store in the mall was submerged and even residential buildings were completely flooded. The roads turned into actual lakes and thousands upon thousands of cars were completely destroyed. In fact, even Dubai International Airport was forced to cancel hundreds of flights when it's the largest airport in the world and experiences more traffic than that of any other country. But now residents of Dubai have been sharing videos of the city and it looks like nothing even happened. Even tourists are sharing videos of them on the beach when they were under lockdown due to high water levels just a few hours prior. And as a result, many are wondering how this is even possible, because if this happened anywhere else in the world, it would take weeks if not months to recover. Almost immediately, Dubai stopped all cloud seeding operations, which is where they manipulate clouds to create rain for their dry climate, and even used all of their resources to help clean the city. Because Dubai and the Emirates as a whole have so many international employees that make up a majority of the population, nearly all of them were assigned to help with cleanup, to which they brought the city back to normal within the next day. Well, I'm really glad to hear that Dubai situated themselves and got themselves back up on their feet because that really, if those photos are real photos, they really got themselves together well. That's a good thing. And I'm glad they stopped with all cloud seeding because if that's the case, if that's the aftermath of cloud seeding, they're not going to want that ever again and neither do we. Did you know that hummingbirds have teeth? And they're not alone. Flamingos do. And of course, geese have them on their tongues. Geese are, by the way, very aggressive. Birds, however, have done something really weird. A hundred million years ago, birds had regular teeth, and then they lost them. And they had to come up with a whole new method to make these structures, which are made from keratin. But they still have the genes to make their crocodilian-like teeth. Scientists have even been able to activate the gene in chickens, and the embryos grow teeth more similar to a crocodilian. Crocodilians and avians really aren't that far apart in the evolutionary tree. However, once activated, the genes that produce crocodilian-like teeth in avians is actually lethal. So it's quite possible that they weren't able to reactivate that gene to perform the tasks they need to with teeth, so instead found a different method to do it. Not all birds have completely lost their dinosaur traits. You might notice this little guy has thumbs. This is a baby hotzen. They're a South American bird, and they actually retained claws. Before they grow their complete adult set of feathers, they use those claws to climb. This allows them to move nimbly through the trees. When it comes to bird species like these, it's not that hard to imagine how they possibly could have come from something like this. That's a pretty cool little bird at the end with the claws. I've never heard of that before and it looks really cool. Just climbing on trees and just trying to make their way throughout the jungle. That's pretty interesting and they look really neat. I assure you, this is not normal water. If these people on this boat saw what exists over in this area, they would not be able to comprehend what they had just seen. And after speaking to people who have sailed over in this region, I now know what exists over here, which I didn't know eight months ago. Now, what you guys might be thinking is this water is just called glass ocean, which is when the water is so calm that it looks as if it is made out of a type of oil. And technically that is true. That can happen sometimes, but there's also another reason for why the water might be this calm. Now, this intel comes from people that I've spoken to who have been beyond the ice wall. They have told me that the farther away you get from civilization and closer to the great beyond, that there are a lot more deep sea gigantic creatures. Here we've got the Leviathan's Gate. There are these creatures that guard all of these openings out to the new area. And because they are so massive that the resonant frequency of the animal makes the water so calm and still. And that's why it appears just like that.
Hey, that's really cool, actually. I like that that story. I don't know if it's real or not, but that is a really cool theory that the water is just so still because these Titanus monsters are just over there resonating at a frequency that just keeps the water calm. In Peru, there's this village and they've been terrorized by this. They're calling it face peeler. <laughs> Oh my gosh. What? They said that they're seven feet. They don't walk. They float through the woods. A little girl was taken by them. Stop. And they were able to chase them off by shooting at them in the trees and stuff. Got the girl back and she had cuts all around what? her neck. Like they were but about she was to okay? peel. Yeah, but she was like in shock. Yeah, I can imagine. But then in the ocean, they pulled this dude out of the water. No skin, no Yield. muscles. It was just spine and skull. So now the government's getting involved. Oh, no. But the government is saying it's illegal miners in Peru. Peeling people's faces off. But they're saying like, like well, what about them floating? Well, they have jetpacks. Wow, come on. <laughs> what? Everyone in Peru is like, no, they don't. <laughs> They said that they're doing that, like they're trying to pretend to be aliens. Oh, okay. To scare off these villagers so that they can go in there and mine for their gold and stuff. I don't think I would have ever thought that there would have been a organization out there trying to scare these people off, actually killing some of these people, just trying to mine gold and what have you in that area. But if that's not the case, then they have a serious problem on their hands. And what is that out there that's just floating around and taking people and cutting them up? Leave a comment on your thoughts on this, because I'm curious to know if this is some kind of setup by an organization, like they said, to run them off to possibly mine for gold or is this really some kind of evil entity out there like some kind of bad spirit or something because that's pretty scary submechanophobia is a fear of human-made objects submerged in water and this could be partially or entirely underwater so something like a ride where the animatronics come in and out of the water would trigger this some of the popular imagery associated with this fear comes from a japanese folklore park where a trio of river monsters rise out of a pond someone with this fear also may not not like the idea of an underwater shipwreck. They may even not like the idea of a buoy. A part of submechanophobia is that people are scared that they could get stuck next to or underneath the underwater object, or that something more dangerous might emerge out of the foreign object, like a body or something, especially if the object is old and abandoned. This could also maybe lead you to believe that it is haunted. I don't have a phobia of it, but it is extremely disturbing seeing old things submerged underwater or seeing old boats underwater, it is very creepy. Do any of you have this phobia where you're afraid of seeing man-made objects submerged underwater partially, completely, or are you just afraid of water in general? Let me know in the comments. I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay-Z's Jay pregnant mistress yeah. who died of an imaginary aneurysm, just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora who wrote the book, Bling and die as soon as it made the best sellers list. Who the f was these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is f***ing you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no f Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. You could try to get a special prosecutor but they'll just pay somebody to reassign him to another case. I can't wait for everybody to find out what's really been going on in the background. Renowned music industry figure Jaguar Wright offers a captivating account that delves into the intricate world of music, rife with mysteries and questionable occurrences. Wright delves into incidents involving prominent personalities such as Jay-Z, P. Diddy, and Aaliyah. These disclosures are not presented as indisputable facts, but rather as rumors that warrant careful consideration due to insufficient evidence. This narrative exposes the darker aspects of the entertainment industry and prompts reflection on power dynamics and accountability within it. As influential men are implicated in alleged misconduct, Wright's account serves as a reminder of the importance of critically analyzing the events that shape our perceptions of reality. Given these revelations, should Jay-Z be subject to further scrutiny? The Flavor Flav roast. Mm. The moment that I knew the Snoop Dogg is sold out. That was a hurtful moment. I was always grateful to Snoop for taking corrupt under his wing. 
Ricky was in a lot of trouble in Philly. If he hadn't signed a dog pan, I don't even know if he would have been alive. They wanted Cat to humiliate Flav. Like, humiliate him. Like, no holes barred. And they sent a bunch of coon jokes. And I'll never forget watching Cat in the office downstairs at the house in Marina Del Rey. And he's sitting there looking at the fucking script and just shaking his head. And then the next thing you know, the phone rang and I'm standing there in the office in the doorway and I'm like, are you all right? And he picked up the phone and it was the fucking CEO of fucking Comedy Central. And I listened to him threaten to kill him. Man, I've been seeing a lot of these Jaguar Wright videos coming out on TikTok the past day or so. And I thought I would throw a couple of them in here because they're really interesting. I hope that if this lady is telling the truth that she is extremely protected because from what she's saying, she is letting out a lot of information. Yeah, I remember when I decoded the Roku screen and we saw King Kong on the screensaver. Well, I think I know why we see King Kong. But like y'all told me, it's only movie references. So I wanted to take it a step further. Let's decode the movies. Now I know y'all remember this scene from King Kong. Let's take a look. Now look how that look. Remember how that look. You pissed off. Okay, now hold that thought. Oh, this turns a Tama purpose. You don't see that, right? That's just an LED light, and you can see the little LED lights in there, right? In the panel. All right, guys, this is my studio light. You see that orb? It's ref the, the bulbs are reflecting off of the lens, is my guess, and it's showing you where the light source is coming from, which is why you see the orb, right? Just like the light. I'll go take a look at the sun. Look at all the little light bulbs in the orb. Uh, why am I seeing? Oh, we have an artificial sun. You see? And then back in February, I said this. Y'all, I've been sitting on this information for a little minute because y'all know I like to get confirmation first, right? But I think there's a lot of nefarious shit going on with this sun. Mm. And the reason I say that is because when I'm outside, I'm always looking up. And I always look at the sun. And the sun been a little bit too white for me lately. That big ass bright white light, when you see that, just know that is not the sun, okay? That is a sun simulator. Oh my God. I finally caught it. Yeah. I look. Two suns. They literally, bro, look they at literally that shit. are trying to block this shit out. Look at the other sun, y'all. Look at it behind and it. And then look at the little thing up there. Y'all see that shit? The little white thing? Look, look, look. Y'all see that shit up oh there? Oh my God. So, I mean, damn, is King Kong us? Because we do have a fake. Oh, my gosh. He did throw that stick at the sun. <laughs> y'all said it was just movie references? Child, please. But y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comments. I just wanted to connect the dots because I knew. I knew it was the reason why King Kong was on that Roku screensaver. And like I said, I'm going to do all of them. So y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. Open your eyes, your real eye. Peace, love, light, and gratitude. Thank you for watching. I don't know, that could just be pure coincidence. I think movies really like to play into the conspiracy realm. I'm not 100% sure on that one though. And as far as the sun being a fake sun, I have definitely noticed it's much brighter than it used to be. As far as it not being brighter, it's way more white toned. It's just more white. It's not as yellow orange as it used to be. At least in my mind when I was younger, it used to be way more yellow. And I don't know if that's just because of all of the particles that they're spreading through the air. If there's just a bunch of chemtrail particles that the sun is reflecting on and it's just making the sun seem more white. But it definitely is a more white toned color than I remember in the past. And as far as seeing the LED lights in the camera lens, I don't really have an argument about that because I truly think it's the sensors in the phone that they're capturing it on, but I could be completely wrong. Leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on this because there's a lot of people out there that believe that it really is an LED light up there and when you point a phone at it, you're just seeing the LED panels. And there's a lot of people that believe that it's just a sensor in your phone.
Let me know which one you stand on. If there's one thing that keeps me up at night, it's it's something very uh, nerdy. But I'm a little upset because I hope this happens in my lifetime. And I can't believe no one's figuring this out. Or we're even talking about it. And that fact is that, our theory, because people don't know about this, is that all the planets in our solar system are most likely going to become habitable. Now, I asked my AI, do they know that these are gonna become habitable or are they seeing the, what's going on? I mean, look at Saturn. It's got a ring of shit flying around it and it goes farthest away from the sun to closest. And our, our planet is in the range where our planets can become habitable and Venus and Mars. And Venus is gonna get sucked into the sun and the sun recycles it, it's really cool. All of the planets are gonna eventually get sucked into the sun, long time. But I believe that Venus was habitable and now we are habitated, habitable. And Mars is next, but not in the next hundred years. Like, hello, this is why I think we're still really stupid. Because if we think that it's in any way ready to be habitable, Mars. No, it's not. It's not a random floating planet out there going, and we're wondering if just one just happens to be. There is something happening. It's a formation. That's a long time. That's a lot of people. But the ones behind are gas giants because they don't have a solid crust. There's a process. The molten lava forms the crust, and then they lose the water, and then an asteroid hits them, and... Well, maybe that's why. It's still possible that out of all of them, ours was the only one that became habitable. But, but here's the other part. Look out into the solar system, okay? Or, sorry, I'm a little stonesy. The stars. So when you're looking at a star, you're looking at the end of one habitable planet or more, possibly. Because when all these planets get sucked into the sun, our sun, the sun expands and then goes down to a white dwarf. So it's chewing us up, all the planets. And then if it hits another star, it explodes out into the galaxy and the stardust goes back to do what? Form another solar system and create more habitable planets. I just want, I need people to talk about this. The kidnap guy part two response. Actually, no, he doesn't. He does not have his hands shackled. Um, he's perfectly fine sitting here eating freaking ice cream. <coughs> so, how about y'all just keep your freaking opinions and your comments to your goddamn self? Because it's actually harmful and very rude that you're sitting here talking crap saying that I'm trying to kill my boyfriend. Which is going to be my husband soon. Um, but you guys live your life and stop worrying about other people's lives. And be nice to people and stop accusing them or trying to hurt people. Because it's not fair. And it's not right. From our day, take, right? He's perfectly fine. He's sitting right here. He's talking to me. I'm not going to harm somebody. I don't know if you remember quite a few videos in the past. There was this couple and it looked like the man was in distress. He had a bunch of Chinese food in front of him and the way she was talking about him and how they were going to enjoy themselves, it just seemed like he was kind of kidnapped. Tartaria was this empire, highly advanced. This empire existed in modern day Russia, but now like all like historians and stuff like, no, it didn't. Well, guess what? <laughs> There's a document, Soviet Russia and the impacts of communism with the changing and racing of history. And they talk about Tartaria. It says, or let us take the matter of history. The core of a people's cultural heritage, the Central Committee of the Communist Party issued a directive ordering the parties to proceed to the scientific revision of the history of Tartaria. Tartar history was to be falsified in order to eliminate references of the real course of the tartar russian relations what does that all mean so basically there it exists Rus that just made me freak out a little bit yeah because we talked about the native americans and like how developed they were and yeah. like how they they're connected to people groups from all over the world but the smithsonian's like no we're gonna write history like this yeah they were isolated and dumb
Yeah, they can't be vindicated because it didn't exist. How did they lose their history like that? How did they become nulled out if they were more advanced or if they had a population? Why are they no longer, you know? Like, did they really get wiped out or did they move underground? Or did they just simply never exist? I'm still doing a lot of digging on Tartaria because it's extremely interesting, but I get pulled to so many different directions in this study that it's kind of complicated and confusing in a way. So any input that you have on Tartaria, leave a comment down below giving me some help here because there's a lot to go through when it comes to Tartaria. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I'm really sorry it's a short one today. I have a lot of stuff going on right now, and I plan on making some small changes here on YouTube as far as how I'm doing my content. I'm going to make a little bit longer video episodes. You'll see in the future. Just stick around and you'll see how it plays out. But as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description. And with that being said, have a good day.